Hey everybody, this is Mr. Johnstone, and I want to explain our AP lab number three called Enzyme Activity. Now in this picture you see here, uh, this is a general enzyme that is accepting a substrate, a molecule of some kind, and it's going to actually contact that substrate, and through contacting and sort of changing shape and, and doing what enzymes do, um, they're gonna, it's going to cause some kind of chemical reaction to occur, and that enzyme is going to produce some kind of product. Now for our lab here, you can see that oh, we're using peroxidase is the name of our enzyme, and that, that enzyme takes pero hydrogen peroxide and decomposes it into two products, water and oxygen, and that chemical reaction does not happen unless there is an enzyme to do that, and peroxidase is that enzyme. You can see the chemical reaction formula down at the bottom of the slide that says two molecules of hydrogen peroxide are broken down with the help of the enzyme uh, into two molecules of water and two uh, and one molecule of oxygen. And it's that oxygen that we're going to collect in the lab to actually find out how quickly these enzymes are working. So some of the main things we need here are the yeast. This is a yeast solution, just water and yeast and a little bit of sugar just to keep the yeast happy while we're working with them. And remember, yeast is a fungus. Uh, they are single-celled fungi. Um, and so they're simply suspended in this water, and they're pretty happy. Um, and then we have hydrogen peroxide, and that's, again, going to be the substrate. The yeast, or rather the enzymes in the yeast cells, are going to react with the hydrogen peroxide and decompose it into the water and oxygen. And then our variable that we're going to be testing is pH. So um, our question, I guess, is um, how does uh, an environment with a different pH affect how the yeast cells and therefore their enzymes actually work to, um, to decompose and, and cause a chemical reaction with the hydrogen peroxide? So here's the rest of the setup. A graduated cylinder is filled with water and then turned upside down in a tub of water so the water stays inside the tube and or inside the cylinder. And then a plastic tube, this is just like aquarium uh, tubing um, that's flexible and plastic, it is inserted up inside the, the bottom end of the uh, inverted graduated cylinder. And that tube is connected to a reaction vessel where our chemical reaction is going to happen. And therefore, when the gas is created, the gas is going to go through the tube and bubble into the water chamber there and displace some of that water and however much water is displaced is however much gas we collected from the reaction and we actually want to know how quickly the reaction is happening so we're actually going to measure um, oxygen production or gas production per second or per minute or something like that. So uh, we prepare the solutions with the buffer and the hydrogen peroxide and um, using a pipette to, to get the right amount of yeast for the reaction and you can see I'm pipetting the yeast into the reaction vial there. And so the yeast is in the reaction vial on the left, and in a smaller graduated cylinder, I've measured out the appropriate amount of hydrogen peroxide, 5 milliliters, and also 5 milliliters of the pH buffer solution. Um, that, that makes the overall solution of the hydrogen peroxide in the buffer um, whatever pH the buffer solution is designed for. Um, and then we're going to add that to two, only 2 milliliters of yeast solution. Lots of yeast cells um, in just 2 milliliters, so that's, that's enough for our chemical reaction. So then um, we uh, mix the solutions and use the rubber stopper to contain the reaction inside the vial. That rubber stopper has a hole in it, and that's connected to the rubber tubing, which again is inserted up inside the gas collection uh, graduated cylinder. Um, and we try to do this as quick as possible because as soon as those, rea those reactants are mixed, or as soon as the yeast and the hydrogen peroxide are mixed, they're going to start to react. And we, we want to start sort of analyzing uh, how much gas we're producing per second, um, basically from second number zero. So um, we want to make sure we do that as quickly as possible, um, and then we set the reaction vessel sort of just on the table, or sort of, a, you can see here, just leaning up against the tub so it can feel free to react, and we can collect the gas in the chamber. So then here's another look, uh, sort of up-close look, of sort of the gas bubbling through the chamber, or through the gas collection chamber, and then displacing some of that water, and through the graduated marks on the side of the graduated cylinder, we can actually get milliliters of gas um, produced, and we can we can take a, a reading um, every 15 seconds for a couple minutes to actually get a rate or a speed at which the gas is being produced. And then here's my data. You can see my data table there on the left, and then my chart on the right-hand side. And you can see I tested pH 7, which is neutral pH, and then pH 9 and pH 11. And one of the first things that you can see here um, that's quite striking is that although the slope and therefore the rate of gas production in the pH 7 is slightly higher than pH 9 and pH 11, it's not that much different. Um, in fact, all three of these reaction rates are 
to the untrained eye, um, sort of the same, uh, almost equal rates um, in all three of these uh, reaction trials. Um, and that goes against what somebody might think. You might think that pH 9 and pH 11, especially being such a high pH, might impact these uh, this biological system enough um, to slow down that rate or speed up that rate or at least change it somehow. Um, um, but it didn't. Um, so maybe I'd have to do some more trials to actually see if this is um, actually the real data or whether it's um, or whether this was just a, uh, an artifact of me just doing it once. So um, again, we'd have to do it again. But that raises the question of, of how are these yeast doing this? How at a pH of 11, which is pretty high for biological systems, um, how are the yeast still producing gas at an equal rate or a rate that's similar to the rate at pH 7, which you would expect would be sort of the baseline rate because most biological systems, most cells, uh, like to have a neutral pH. So that's just a curious thing. So we'd have to do a few more trials. In fact, let's do that in class. Let's do a few more of these trials with a few more pH values to actually get a few feel for um, really what these pH um, environments actually do to the yeast and therefore the enzymes that they contain.